Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning, and to all who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you have not already done so, we ask that all cell phones be silenced at this time. Leading us in the celebration of the Eucharist is Father Ron. Please stand. We invite everyone to please pick up your songbooks and join in singing our gathering song, number 583. gather today to celebrate the 19th Sunday in the year of the Church, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Spirit, be with you all. Amen. We come together today to be reminded once again whose people we are. To be vigilant, vigilant for God's presence, and faithful in doing God's will. And so let us pray that with God's grace, we may always be ready for that day when we see the Lord face to face. May the Eucharist nourish and strengthen us as we grow as his disciples. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have gone on ahead to prepare a place for us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you point the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. On a day we cannot know, and at an hour we do not expect, your Son will come again, O God of the covenant. Blessed are those servants, alert and ready. May we work in mutual love until our waiting is ended and our labor fulfilled. 
Keep our lamps burning brightly, our hearts ever watchful for the hour of your Son's return, and be admitted by him to the eternal banquet. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect, with one accord, the divine institution. The word of the Lord. Our psalm can be found in your hymnal number 38.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for, an evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundation, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, There also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch, find them prepared in this way, 
blessed are those who uh, be sure of this. The master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming. He would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing finds doing so. Truly I say to you, your master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men's servants and maid servants, to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour punish that servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much. Still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We've been ex- given much by God, if the faith and hope. So God expects very much of each and each of us and all of us together. Our brothers and sisters, living in the time of COVID, as we have been doing for almost three years now, living in a time of increasing social complexity a growing estrangement from truth-telling and truthful speech, both privately and in public. Living in a time of increasing national and international disagreements by both political leaders, media personalities, ordinary populace, living in a time of increasingly new and different perceptions about who we are, about wondering about the inherited understandings of gender differences, of understanding ourselves and how to express ourselves, living in a time of growing fears concerning the ever-growing and deepening global climate crisis, the international political crises and military threats and so forth. Jesus' words to us in today's gospel, there is no reason to be afraid, little flock, for it has pleased your father to give you the kingdom. Jesus gives us a promise. It's only a promise. It's the only thing we seem to have. Nothing else. The question for us is, is this promise that God gives us in Christ sufficient to assist us to survive, to help us hang on, to make us motivated enough to continue? along the path of faith and hope. We have examples in the scripture today to help us answer that. For Abraham, it was. And for his wife, Sarah, too. It was just as much for Sarah as for Abraham. As we heard in the first reading today, that self-same promise that given God gave to Abraham and to Sarah is ours as well. A promise given to us by Jesus. And with that promise, 
like Abraham and Sarah, you and I also can go on to live in its power, the power to trust in the promise that God is with us and will be with us, and God will accompany us, and give us what we need to move from one day to the next, out of darkness into light, out of estrangement and into communion. Trusting in him and in his promise, we can commit ourselves to the model that he gives us throughout his ministry. To welcome the stranger. To come to the aid of the one lying helpless in the gutter. We can ask for and receive the grace to love our neighbor, and with our neighbor we can participate in realizing the kingdom that Jesus came to offer us and to begin here in this place, in this world, until it is fully realized in God's fullness of time. Faith and hope. These are words given to us to help explain the courage that God offers us for our taking. The courage to listen the courage to ponder the meaning of a message given by God and to act according to that message. The biblical all-stars featured in today's reading, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, men and women, Sarah just as much as Abraham, called upon to move into a new place, to a new home, into a new way of living and relating. They were called upon to learn and embrace that peace and fullness of life which is always and in every way the work and the responsibility of each of us and individually and together. It is given to us as both forebears and models, building up what Jesus called the kingdom of God. You and I are called to fashion a better world we have been living in. A world of grace, a world of co-responsibility, a world in which we stop denigrating the dignity and the worth of our neighbor. They each obeyed Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Sarah. They each obeyed when they were called to go to a new place looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and maker is God. By faith, Scripture says, Abraham and Sarah received the power to do something they thought was not in their power to do, to generate a posterity, to be the parents of a population more numerous than the stars. Abraham was an old, old fellow. Scripture says, somewhat comically, sexually he was as good as dead. And Sarah herself was sterile. But they believed, and they acted because they believed that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. And so it was that there came forth from one man and one woman, themselves as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars, and as countless as the sands of the earth. The simple lesson, this profound challenge to us, is to learn what God requires of us, to know that without doubt, that what we are called to do is not beyond our power. For the Spirit of God is ever present offers us all that we need to do the work, to do the service that Jesus enlists us in, the service that Jesus in his own life and ministry modeled for us. The heart of the work of each and all of us is given. The service we are called to is named community. Its form and action is solicitude and service. It's the work of the saints, the work we are each called to take on 
And thus, in the church's process, for example, of canonizing a candidate, a saint, along that process, they refer to that particular person as so-and-so, the servant of God. That's our title, too. For we are called to sainthood. Our life is a journey to sainthood. Life is a, our life is a journey in which we are to recognize ourselves and one another as servants of God through our love for one another until the process comes to God's glorious dream. Do not be afraid, Jesus says in the gospel today, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belonging. Forsake the point of view of the secular world and embrace the vision of the God. Judge no one negatively by reason of their color, their ethnic background, their sexual orientation, etc., etc., etc. We are all, each of individually and together, the well-beloved sons and daughters of God, meant to relate to one another accordingly in every situation. Provide money bags for yourselves, Scripture says, that do not wear out. Fill it not with the coins of Caesar, but the wealth that God offers us. Be watchful for the Master's return. Know that every day the Master is liable to show up. Be attentive. Be faithful. Be hopeful. Believe. That's the message. Jesus is with us. God offers us all that we need to accomplish what God calls us to build the world of peace, justice, by which we honor one another. And in that honoring of one another, we honor the God who created us, and calls us to be with Him forever. Our brothers and sisters, let us now bring our prayers to the Lord that we might always be vigilant about the work of building up the kingdom of God. May all members of the church always be prepared for the coming of the kingdom, committed to doing the work of the Lord until he comes again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who have been forced from their homelands by political or religious strife find in others God's promise of care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all those to whom much has been given be attentive to the needs of those beyond their boundaries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our parish community spend our time and effort in service to others so that we will be well prepared for the day we meet our Lord and Savior face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May William Weissman, Christopher Cromer, and all our faithfully departed rejoice one day to see all they believed in and hoped for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these needs to be hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for Grace Ramirez, Diana Catapano and Eugene Warchel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
pray for all in the medical profession, for researchers, doctors, surgeons, nurses, bedside attendants. We pray to the Lord. O God of salvation, we joyfully await the fulfillment of your kingdom. Hear then our prayers that we might never tire of the work that you have given us to do. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our offertory song is number 686. themselves to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed, be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, and work of human hand, that it become for us our spiritual drink. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church here gathered, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered by your power to transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, that you care for all of your daughters and sons. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, again give you thanks and praise, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, but of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of God. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church here gathered, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring us, your Church, O Lord, we pray, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and the entire people that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor in our burden. Help us to serve him truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may we, your church, stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember, too, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we too may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. 
there in communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Apostles and Martyrs, and the Rose and all the Saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a sign of the peace of the kingdom of Christ. south to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who are called the banquet of the Lamb. Our communion song is number 532.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my life and into my heart. I embrace you, write myself holy to you. Amen. Let us pray. Kindle in our hearts, O God, of our ancestors, the same faith that inspired Abraham and Sarah to live as pilgrims on earth. Keep our lamps burning brightly, our hearts ever watchful for the hour of your Son's return, that we may be open, that we may open the gate as soon as he knocks, and be admitted by him to the eternal banquet. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We have the following announcements for the week. At all the doors of the church and chapel are baskets with Super 50-50 raffle ticket books. All are asked to take one book as you exit Mass today and sell to your family and friends. The drawing will be held in two weeks on Tuesday, August 23rd. The raffle total is now over $23,000. Proceeds will be used for the education of our parish children. Our novena prayer for the Feast of St. Rose of Lima will begin next Sunday after the 9.30 a.m. Mass. Monday, August 15th, is the Feast of the Assumption. Ministers and ushers are needed for all the Masses. The St. Vincent de Paul Society is collecting back-to-school supplies during the month of August for the children of the Freehold community. Today's bulletin has the list of needed items. St. Rose of Lima School is looking for a full-time kindergarten teacher and a full-time custodian maintenance person. The Religious Education Program is looking for volunteer teachers and aides. See today's bulletin for more information on all of the above announcements. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit seeking to be disciples who share generously and serve humbly, let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord.